Catherine Tucker Wyndham was an Alabama treasure. Though gone, her endearing stories still capture the hearts of admirers well beyond her home state. Her life and legacy are celebrated in many places, but especially in Thomasville, where she grew up. Melissa Bowman takes us there. Catherine Tucker Wyndham once said, I think storytelling is a way of saying I love you. Fortunately for the world, she loved us enough to share a wealth of heartwarming stories. Nationally, Catherine Tucker Wyndham may be remembered as a storyteller. Uh, she was featured on All Things Considered on the National Public Radio. Uh, here in Alabama and across the South, she's particularly remembered for her 13 uh, Ghosts of Alabama and Jeffrey. Speaking of Jeffrey, something very important to him is on display at the Catherine Tucker Wyndham Museum at Coastal Alabama Community College in Thomasville. This is the chair that was in her home that Jeffrey notoriously rocked, uh, which helped to inspire her to write the ghost stories. Jeffrey's chair is just one of many items to see. Located in the town where Wyndham was raised, the museum chronicles all aspects of her life, featuring everything from her baby booties to prized possessions she acquired as a young girl. One special thing that we have is her brownie camera. Um, so the camera that kind of launched her photography career that she received right here in Thomasville. The museum even has the journalist pass she got at age 12 as the Thomasville Times movie editor. She would later become an accomplished journalist when few women could. Also on display is a sculpture by world-renowned folk artist Charlie Lucas, the costume Wyndham wore in her one-woman play about Julia Tutwiler, and other mementos of an artist whose contributions are cherished by so many. Catherine Tucker Wyndham certainly had an effect on people, including me. My grandmother gave me this book when I was a child, and it sparked my lifelong appreciation for great stories. Her storytelling traditions continue to be celebrated here at the museum and in the Thomasville community. A beloved Thomasville tradition is the Catherine Tucker Wyndham Ghost Walk every October. Guests enjoy a fall carnival as they wait their turn to board a hayride to hear spooky stories. Each trailer has a host, and the host on the trailer is well-versed in the history of Thomasville. And then, eventually, on the hayride, you'll come to a stop, and usually um, a costumed storyteller will come out, and then that storyteller will tell one of Miss Wyndham's ghost stories. Really, um, we're trying to accentuate what Catherine Tucker means to this community by honoring her by having this ghost walk. It's a fun event and it's something that actually uh, brings people together. And Catherine Tucker Wyndham loved bringing folks together. Before she passed, she visited the museum often and participated in the ghost walk, so she knew how much Thomasville cares about preserving her legacy. It was important to her to use her stories to connect people, to connect us beyond any kind of um, cultural backgrounds or differences. She taught us acceptance, and that's important. For Simply Southern, I'm Melissa Bowman. The Catherine Tucker Wyndham Museum is open from 7.30 to 5 Monday through Thursday and 7.30 to 1.30 on Fridays. They hold different events during the year, including a Catherine Tucker Wyndham birthday celebration in June. That event includes storytelling and features things she loved, like her favorite music and her favorite recipes. While most of the storytellers at the Catherine Tucker Wyndham Ghost Walk are locals, some are actually from the Alabama towns in their stories. For example, if a story takes place in Demopolis, the storyteller may be from there. Event organizers feel this is a great way to incorporate other communities and share a bit of their history. Now, allergies can range from annoying to life-threatening. And one of the ones we hear about most is peanut allergy. When Simply Southern continues, we'll tell you about a treatment that's providing relief to folks who suffer a bad reaction to one of Alabama's top crops. Life is made up of moments. Some big, some small. And it's these things that make life worth living. At Alpha Insurance, we protect what's important to you. The little things and the big things. That's why we're here to give you the coverage you need. It's one of the little things we do. Alpha Insurance, for all the things. As a farmer, I, I grow U.S. farm-raised catfish. 
doing that, I know it's a safe product and I enjoy eating it any way my wife likes to cook it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luke Smelly and I'm Alabama 2020 Catfish Farmer of the Year from Greensboro, Alabama. If you haven't tried U.S. Farm Raised Catfish, you should because it's delicious. Simple as that. Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. It's not about the game, it's about what you do before the game. It's how you plan for the season. It's what you do before everyone wakes up. It's what you do in the heat, rain, or cold. It's what you do that everyone else doesn't do. Because that's how you grow. Hey y'all, I'm Kim Earwood with Alabama Ag in the Classroom. We're gonna milk this rural dictionary for all it's worth as we define dairy terms. When it's time to be milked, cows are moved from the pasture into a milking parlor, which has individual stalls for the cows and a lower area called an operator pit for the farmer. This setup helps keep the animals and people safe. To milk a cow, the farmer cleans the cow's udder and teats and then attaches an automatic milking system. Cows have to be milked two or three times every day. If you want more ag education resources, visit alabamaaitc.org. This Rural Dictionary is brought to you by Alabama Ag in the Classroom. See you next time.